Hi, I'm Georgie Bray and I am the farm manager here at RSPB's Hope Farm. We have the farm here is 180 hectares um, or 450 acres of arable farmland. Very typical of the areas in some ways, but hopefully at the end of this talk you'll see it's quite extraordinary in other ways. Um, we have owned the Hope Farm for 20 years now and the core aims of why the RSPB has bought a farm is just to demonstrate how much biodiversity that you can have on farmland. 20 years ago, the RSPB, other conservation organisations and other people as well had recognised that there was this decline in farmland biodiversity. Um, farmland birds, for example, had declined by over 60% in the last 50 years. Um, skylarks are a species which we still think on farmland as relatively common, um, had declined by 50%, so we'd lost the equivalent of about a million birds. Um, we had, as an organisation, we had quite a few ideas for why they were declining. Uh, farming practices had changed, largely due to changes in agricultural policies. The habitats that they needed to feed and breed and survive through winter um, just weren't as abundant as they should be but although we had a good idea of what they needed um, to improve their survival and to help populations increase again our knowledge of farming was pretty small um, so the whole premise of this is that rather than just buying another nature reserve we'd buy a farm and see if we could stop the decline in farmland biodiversity or hopefully increase the levels of wildlife. Um, and we wanted to do this in a way that was going to show how possible it is. So all of the things that we were doing, they weren't particularly revolutionary. The fact that you're increasing your hedgerow size is putting some winter seed mixes in to feed birds over winter and planting some flowers around the edges of fields. These are all quite um, simple solutions, but we just wanted to see if we put these things in place, thought about where we're pushing them and managed them to the best of our ability, what was the difference it would make to wildlife and could we still make these changes whilst maintaining a reasonable profit on the farm. So 20 years ago we started monitoring and we bought this farm here, chose it because it was very typical of other farms in the area. It had two main crops grown in it, so winter wheat and all seed rape. It had a few hedgerows. Uh, behind me here, there was a small hedgerow on this side and there wasn't anything on this side and it was big open Cambridgeshire farmland. Before making changes and including habitat management on the farm, we started a baseline monitoring. So that was monitoring farmland birds in the summer and all other bird species as well in the summer, birds in the winter, butterflies, and we set a baseline for a whole other suite of species. From there we started making small changes, so planting in winter bird seed mixes to keep birds fed um, through the colder months like we are in now. We let the hedgerows grow much bigger, taller, messier because wildlife at the end of the day doesn't like everything to be really neat and tidy. We planted some wildflower and grass margins and we also diversified the cropping as well. So we've now got seven different crops in the rotation. And we've monitored the change every year since. And I think it's safe to say that just by putting these simple things in, it is incredible what a difference it can make to biodiversity. We've only taken 15% of our land out of production to put to conservation management and different trials and those kind of things. Um, and we still get paid for putting those things in through uh, currently EU funded schemes and hopefully through UK funded schemes in the future. Um, so we were still maintaining a profit from these areas and in some cases we we're actually maintaining more of a profit than we would have done if we kept them in um, cropping. But by taking 15% of that land out of production the cropping itself is still maintaining a stable profit but we've managed to increase our breeding birds by on average 250%. Our wintering birds have increased by 1500%. Um, 
and then our butterflies they have increased so far up to 400% and actually the butterfly numbers we still haven't reached carrying capacity so butterfly numbers are still increasing. Um, before I came to the farm I knew that there were, farmland was an important place for wildlife but you would walk around uh, say my farm at home and you might see the odd yellow hammer, the linnet and w when we purchased this farm it was very similar. Um, on a winter bird count you might see a couple of yellow hammers. Um, on the surveys there weren't actually any linnets recorded or any reed buntings, although these are a key farmland species. Now our total count last year of yellow hammers, linnets and reed buntings was about 990. I mean, in 2016 there were over 700 yellow hammers recorded on farm. Um, it sounds like a huge increase and it really is but this is still only comparable to the numbers that we had say in the 1960s. Um, it's an amazing thing to be able to work and manage a place like this where it shows that you can still have the productive farmland and you only need to take small areas out of production to make a massive difference for wildlife. Although those numbers are extraordinary this isn't to say that this is the only farm that is doing those amazing things for wildlife. There are farmers all across the country that are doing more and more of these wildlife friendly farming practices. And the fact that we've got the monitoring here, in my eyes, is not just like an inspiration, I suppose, for other farmers to show what a difference and how biodiverse farmland can be but it shows to members of the public, to politicians and things, that with the right support, we can actually help biodiversity to recover. So UK farmland covers three quarters of the UK. The numbers that we are able to demonstrate here and the fact that it's actually a really simple recipe for helping wildlife to recover is a bit of an inspiration to members of the public to show people that farmland is a really important place for wildlife and to policymakers as well so that it gives more impetus um, and more power to farmland as being somewhere that needs to be given the support so that this isn't just happening in small pockets across the landscape, but this actually happens in a connected way across the whole of the UK. Just going into a little bit more detail about some of the things that we uh, manage here and just how you can take, say, a hedgerow and really make it not just work for biodiversity, but work for the farmer as well. Um, so this hedgerow here, when we bought the farm, it stood above waist high, it was about a metre wide. There are a few gaps and things in it. Um, and the way we've managed it is to change from annual cutting to cutting but on it every three years. And by doing that, I hope you can see behind, there are so many more berries. So when you have the red wings and the thrushes coming through, you're going to have a lot more winter food. But there is so much more to it than just berry food. Somebody described to me once that a hedgerow can actually be a vertical flower margin. Um, and if you have a diversity of different plants in there, so your hawthorn, blackthorns, um, wayfaring tree through to your brambles and your ivies, you can get a flowering sequence that goes right from the beginning of spring all the way through to autumn. On a really warm day now you will still get queen bees and queen wasps and things looking around for pollinator resources and if you've got ivy in the hedgerow it's going to be full of diversity. So there's all of that wildlife that you're providing a home for, for pollinators and things like that. Um, but that stuff actually works in the field as well. So if you have pollinator resources, if you have lots of vegetation that you're allowed to grow a little bit tall and messy, maybe some cow parsley on the base of the hedge, the cow parsley can be a great place for hoverflies, adults, to find some food. And then actually the hoverfly larvae do a fantastic job of predating on aphid pests, which we don't want to have in the field because they can actually really harm the crop and they can lower our yields. So it's all about changing the way that farming works so that you're providing these habitats so that they in turn can actually help us to do the farming. Um, 
One thing that we have changed in recent years, so we have the sort of basic habitat management we put in place of the hedgerows, seed mixes and those kind of things. Um, but a couple of years ago, we took this a step further and we have now gone insecticide free on the farm as well. This is quite a big step, particularly where we know that there are insect pests that can damage the yields. But so far, we actually haven't seen any decline um, or significant decline in our yields as a result. There are other farmers around the country as well who have been doing this for five or even ten years and they've said the same thing where they went insecticide free because they might go out on a field and spray for insect pests and find that they're actually spraying the beneficial insects as well which could be really harmful for the whole ecosystem sta stability long term. So these farmers they've gone insecticide free and ten years on they haven't looked back so we've taken that step and done the same. And instead, if we look in a field, there was a bean field, say, a couple of years ago now. And there were loads of different aphids on it. And normally, that would say, OK, right, there are aphids and they might be damaging the plants, so we'll spray for those. Instead, we left it and came back a week later and it was full of la ladybird larvae. There were all these ladybird larvae that had gone into the crop because the field was surrounded by wildflower margins that were providing a home for these insects at other times of year and providing food as well. So it's kind of creating a bit of an army almost so that you can have those ready. And if you have a small amount of pests, that isn't too much of a problem as long as you have those other animals and creatures and everything that can help keep them under control. We have different research projects going on at the farm where in more recent years rather than just taking land out of production to provide habitats for wildlife we're looking more and more at how nature can help us to do the farming in the field. So we, behind me we've got a field that has wildflower corridors that run all the way through them and it's kind of taking that idea of the ladybirds going from the flower margins into the field and making the whole field, one connected space with habitats going all the way through them so that ladybirds, hoverflies, parasitoid wasps, which are also great at parasitising um, insect pests, even small mammals that help us to control the slugs, they can get all the way across the fields using the habitat so they don't have to go too far into the crop to be able to help us do the farming in the field. For the first 15 years of Hope Farms ownership, we were all about providing the habitats and looking at biodiversity and maintaining a profit. But things have changed now. So there are added pressures on farmland. It's becoming increasingly difficult to grow certain crops where we have uh, resistance from weeds like black grass to herbicides that we may use out on farm. We've got resistance to insecticides anyway, which aren't such a problem here because we aren't using them, but they will still be an issue on other farms across the country. But there really is this issue that we are facing more and more, that the more we go against nature and the more that we resort to only using the chemical out the can rather than other things to help grow farmland, the more it fights back. We've now started to research and work with other farmers as well to look for ways that we can help overcome these issues, but again, in a way that works with nature. So our cropping rotation has been really important for doing this, but we've also been looking at increasing the organic matter in our soils, improving the soil health, using cover crops, which are a sacrificial crop growing over winter, which is all about trying to keep a green cover on the field for as much of the year as possible so that we can have a soil that is rich in organic matter so that it has a live biology that helps us to grow crops and actually should help the crops be better at overcoming any other external pressures like pests and disease and that kind of thing. One of the key things for us, of course, is that all of these things are still going to have biodiversity conservation at the heart as we are a nature conservation organisation. So we have been looking at providing organic matter and growing cover crops and seeing what a difference that makes to the soil, our organic matter in the soil and for the biodiversity in the field as well.
And we've actually found some really exciting results. So by putting on compost, which is coming out of your green bins at home actually, and it's recycled, so rather than going to landfill, we use it to fertilise the fields. By doing that, we've managed to increase the amount of earthworms, of a few different functional groups as well, so that they are better able to recycle the nutrients and help us to farm. Um, worms are an amazing thing for farmland anyway, and an amazing thing for soil and helping us to grow crops, but I won't go too much into that because we don't have enough time today. Um, but then also by having more worms in the soil, that's going to be providing more bird food as well. By having the cover crops growing in the ground and keeping that green cover, the soil looks better, it's more alive, it smells richer. And over winter, when we compare that to a fallowed field of bare soil, there is actually, in a lot of cases, more birds using that habitat. There's a field about, I don't know, 200 metres over that way, which has a winter cover crop on it. And at the moment it is full of insect life, it has a flock of 50 skylarks flying above it and loads of other species. So these are all things that we're doing now where our organic matter in these areas with your compost has increased by a percent in five years. The crops are looking healthier, the soil looks healthier, but we're not taking land out of production. It's these kind of things that we need to do so that we can not just help to biodiversity recover, but still produce food, working towards a way of farming that is doing more for carbon sequestration, so trying to get as far as we can to net zero farming. And there are still so many questions to answer there, but hopefully in five, 10 years time, we'll be able to come up with the answers to those as well. So that we, amongst other farms in the country, can demonstrate a way that not just shows biodiverse farming, but also one that can help. So I hope that today has given you guys some inspiration and just shown how much farming can do for biodiversity whilst producing for you, food for you guys at home and to help reduce climate change as well. When I came to this farm, it was a massive eye opener to me, walking out onto a farm and just seeing how many birds, butterflies, bees, like the wildflower margins are just humming through the summer and the winter bird seed mixes at the moment just off full you will walk through it and you'll just get a flush of a hundred birds or whatever or at least so when i first came to the farm it blew my mind for how much nature you can have on the farm and for all of the other things you're doing we were doing here as well um, this is not by any stretch of the imagination to say that here at hope farm is the final solution it's not perfect there are so many answers we um, are yet to answer but it does give hope at least that there are, that what 20 years ago seemed like an almost impossible task, it seems a lot more possible now. What I do here is really important. Just coming out here today and seeing how much nature can be thriving on the farm um, just hammers home how amazing it would be if this kind of thing happened on a landscape scale, not just across the whole of the UK, but further afield as well. It has been an honour to talk amongst these amazing people here today and bring you all out onto Hope Farm and tell you guys what we're about. So thank you very much.